Okay, hi Sarah. Hi. Thank you for joining this interview. I'm very excited because I got a lot of questions to ask you. So Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. So um, my name is Sarah and I run Vigilante Linguistics, which is my, lang my language and karate integration. So my language learning from essentially a martial arts perspective. And I am a learner of Spanish and French and Mandarin and my native wow. language is English. Yeah, cool. Great. So yeah, I just think that it will be very interesting to um, interview someone who has linguistic background and also because you are learning Mandarin right now, right? <laughs> Yeah, great. So um, not long ago, I actually asked my audience um, what question um, <laughs> would they like to ask you? Mm -hmm. So I got six questions here. The, uh, should we go through the first one? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So the first one is, do you have any suggestion for learning tones in Chinese? Well, I mean, I guess I'll let you know once I get them down better. <laughs> but um, right now, I um, I started with the tones. That was the very first thing that I did with my Mandarin, and I was working with a tutor, so I had someone guiding me. Yeah. And it was um, just going through like purely phonetics when we started, not even any words, just mm -hmm. yeah sounds and the tones, and then adding in, you know, of course, using them with words like pronouncing the words and it's it's still not great but it that helped a lot and mm -hmm. there are gradual improvements that i can see yeah. since I, eight months ago um i can see the improvements here and there and then a word will come up that i pronounce badly yeah. and then you know it'll be corrected and then it'll be um a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit yeah. better each time yeah, yeah. So it actually takes time, right? Mm -hmm. mm, because yeah. a lot of students of mine, they are very stressful about tones, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so that is normal, right? For, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, because tone is so, I think it's quite a special feature of Chinese language. Yeah, so True. we got, yeah, we need time to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do you have any, like, tips to Maybe like a train your tongue um, outside of the class. Do you do anything special to do it? Do it? I practice my oh. um, vocabulary that I have. Yeah, I just go over my lessons. I use, um, I read like whatever I have. Um, I do a lot of writing because I'm mm. learning, I've been learning characters since day one, which is part of why I've been learning so slowly because I've been yeah. <laughs> really set on getting down as well but i go through and i write them and then i read them and i write the characters and i write the opinion and i read them so that's how i practice on my own is oh. a lot of writing but then also reading aloud and oh, that reading aloud. yeah yeah and then when i meet with my tutor then i have feedback on my practice and the lessons and because just doing lessons alone isn't enough you yeah. know, you have to also do your work and then you do your work and then you meet with the teacher and then the teacher can see the progress that you've made on your own and then say, OK, yep. now you're ready to improve a little bit and, and then, you know, guide you into the next step. So it's that independent practice piece that really is what is going to help students to improve. Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. OK, so I got the second question is how do you remember vocabulary? Any tip? <laughs> And how many uh, vocabulary you remember every day? Many. Um, well, I, I don't really know how many. Um, mm -hmm. but my vocabulary, so again, I do a lot of writing because yeah. I just I have a bad memory. I don't remember things well. <laughs> but if I write them and just really like see them many, many yeah. times in different contexts, that helps me to remember. And writing really helps me to remember. Mm. And, and so for my vocabulary, what I do when I get a new set of vocabulary is I take that and I write like each character. I'll write it, um, I'll do a few lines. So I've got, um, well, this is my 
vocabulary book. So I have, um, like here, I have a new uh, word here, and then I'll take it and I'll write it. I'll, I'll write yeah. a couple lines of it and practice a new vocabulary just to learn yeah. the character. And awesome. yeah, just to get familiar with it. Yeah. And then I'll practice writing sentences with it over the weeks. To oh, sentences. Yeah. yeah. That's my, my strategy for the new vocabulary initially. And then after that, it is using it as much as possible in practice. Mm. And, and then sometimes I'll go back and just review my yeah. notes or my, my lessons. And mm -hmm. over time, it starts to stick. Like some of them stick here and there. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Like using the vocabulary in the phrase because mm -hmm. it makes the vocabulary more meaningful, right? Yeah, because if we we just only remember a vocabulary itself, it's actually not much like story. And I think our brain likes story better, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need a little bit of both, though. We need a little <laughs> bit of the practice to learn it as like itself, and then we yeah. need it in context as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But do you do this every day, or how many days in a week? Um. About. So when I'm practicing regularly, which right now I'm not, I haven't been for the last few weeks, um, but when I am regularly going to my um, tutoring lessons each week and then I have my practice, uh, my independent practice, mm -hmm. I some, some weeks I'll do it every single day. Um, mm -hmm. Some weeks it'll be like a couple days here and there and mm -hmm. It really kind of varies and then sometimes I'll just have a break from it like I have right now and then I'll start so it's um, my consistency I suppose you could say is that I am like I keep it in in mind and I'm practicing and um, sometimes I'll use Duolingo as well when I don't have time to write and I want to keep it like, fresh in my mind okay. it's a bit faster and more Mindless, it's a good passive practice to just um, retain information. So as far as how often I practice, um, when I'm really dedicated, I spend about 10 hours a week with my lessons. Like I do the tutoring lessons and I spend about that oh, much time. Like all together. Yeah, and I would say really make progress. That's what I need to be doing. Um, and it, yeah, I need to have my lesson and I need to be practicing like 10 hours a week on my own to have that progress at least. And that can fluctuate a bit from week to week. You know, some weeks it might be a little bit more, some weeks it might be yeah. a little bit less, but on average, that's about what it needs to be in order to see progress. Okay, interesting. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So the third one is how to build up confidence in mm -hmm. speaking Chinese because it's such a different language. I yeah. mean, like if we compare to the tone thing is already <laughs> so different. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of students say when they say some words and they feel like kind of weird themselves <laughs> and they hear themselves pronouncing things and never say before. It's kind of weird. And how do how to build up that confidence when speaking in mm -hmm. I would say maybe like Chinese, of course, or other languages, any yeah. language. Mm. So I definitely think that that's a, that's a skill across languages for yeah. speaking because it's um, something I really struggle with in Spanish when I was starting and for a long time, for many yeah. years. And it just, it's another one of those gradual processes and that the only way that you improve is just by constantly pushing yourself in that direction and in by speaking. The only way you can improve in speaking is to speak. Of course, you need to do other things. You need to read and write and listen and do all the other practice, but you have to speak if you want to improve in speaking. Yes. And it's just a continual process of pushing yourself just a little bit outside of your comfort zone, like a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then yeah. eventually you're much further than where you started. If you continue to do that over a couple of years, then you're yeah. going to be much further than where you started. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And uh, because sometimes I think mm, when you say something and people don't understand you, mm -hmm. they sometimes give you a like a very confusing face. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of scary for a beginner what, uh, who try to speak that language. Yeah. Um, so that mindset is very important. Like we just 
Which do do you just ignore them and keep saying? <laughs> um, these days, yeah. I mean, I try to like. Of course, if someone else doesn't understand me, I try to make myself understood as much as I can. <laughs> but I'm not bothered by things that I would have been bothered by like a few years ago when I was speaking because I've just I've grown so much as a yes. language learner, especially over the last few years. Mm-hmm. But it's and again it's that process. It's very gradual. And the thing that has helped me most is accepting my level, accepting myself, my own level, mm-hmm. because I got to a point in my Spanish where I felt like I was like, when am I ever going to be good enough? When am I going to feel like I can say mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm I'm fluent in Spanish, I'm confident in Spanish, and um, eventually it just kind of happened. Other people started telling me first, they're like, oh yeah, it sounds pretty good, and then but I still make mistakes. Like it's mm-hmm. there's always mistakes, yeah, so I had to get to a point where I just realized that mistakes are always made, mm-hmm. and it's. Like that, I'm satisfied with my own level, even though I'm still improving. And it really just doesn't matter. Like, yeah. whether, of course, I want feedback. Of course, I want to improve, sure. and I want to be understood. But yeah. it just really doesn't matter if other people yeah. think I'm sound funny or you know this and that. Yeah. Someone's always going to think that, no matter what you sound like, no matter what your accent is, someone is always going to dislike it. Mm, yeah, exactly. Okay, good. That's what really helps me to just uh-huh. to be confident is just accepting that I need to just accept myself because yeah. otherwise it will just never happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally agree. Okay, and the next question is um, how to break through the stage that you can understand quite a lot, but you still cannot speak or the word just doesn't come off on your mouth. You know, sometimes we have the moment that when people ask something and we know what they're saying and we know what we want to say, but our mouth just cannot catch our brain, you know. Okay. How, how can you break through this stage? What action can you take to break through? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can, I can only really answer this for my Spanish because that's the only language I've gotten to pass that and through a high enough level too. And yeah. honestly, it's just thousands of hours of practice. Mm. That's how you can't it. You just keep practice. practicing. Years yes, of practice. Away. Yeah. Um, because it's not like there's not one single thing that you can do. You mm. just have to keep practicing and reading, writing, speaking, and getting feedback and yeah. making those gradual improvements like we talked about before. Over time, you know, you get, you get some feedback, you find one or two things, you improve in those areas. And then you get more feedback, and then you find other things, and you improve in those areas. And you just continue to do that over the years, and then eventually you naturally progress past that point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm, and do you think that to study grammar is very important? Because I know there are people think that in like total immersion style of learning is is great. They eventually it's gonna get there. Mm-hmm. But do you think? particularly study grammar will help you to be able to speak like faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, do you think that native speakers, native language learners are learning through an immersive environment when they learn their first language? Yeah. Yeah. Like right. native, like native language learners. So when you go yeah. to school, like for me in English, yeah. I went to school and it was all in English immersive. Mm-hmm for first language sure and i'm sure for for mandarin as well you know yeah yes. it's a language well you still learn grammar right in yeah. grade school you still learn grammar mm-hmm. yes so when we learn through immersion it doesn't exclude grammar oh okay. even a native language like we have grammars we have grammar classes yeah. in elementary yeah. school, high school good point yeah. yeah yeah so it's part of it and I think people think immersion like people forget how much work they've done to learn their first language. Exactly. Yes. Like, we went to school. I went to school, at least over here. Our school system is 12 years plus kindergarten, mm-hmm. 13 years of school yeah. of English practice. Mm-hmm. 
and using that language or of Mandarin practice, whatever your language is, mm -hmm. and grammar lessons as well. Yeah. So I don't think that immersion excludes grammar. Mm. It's a component mm. of it, and you need everything. You need to be. I mean, when you're re when you're doing anything, you're speaking, yeah. writing, you're using grammar. And then it's just like the vocabulary, like you study it in isolation. And then in practice, like in sentences, mm -hmm. it's the same with grammar. You study it in isolation and then you use it in yeah. speaking and writing. And it's, yeah, it works the same way. Interesting. Yeah, I, I always, I also <laughs> yes, think funny. like immersion style is like just not study grammar. Oh, it's grammar. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's great for me to to learn this new thing, new concept. Yeah. yeah people don't think about it. They forget. Yeah. They, they just they they forget how hard they worked in their first language. Exactly. Very interesting. Okay, and um, the number five is. How to deal with grammar structures that is so different mm -hmm. from your own native language? Um, I think in Chinese, um, I think you guys know what I'm talking about, like ba sentence, tai sentence, jiu sentence, or sometimes the Chinese grammar could be totally, the word order could be totally opposite, like in, let's say, English. So a lot of my students, when they're learning a new grammar, and they, they, will, they will be like, <laughs> they're like oh my god like this is so different and how do i and they don't believe that they can use it naturally you know so what's the mindset or my shift that we can do here to not expect to understand it entirely initially right yeah. because when you first learn it you're not going to understand it very well mm. you learn it you learn you know in the introduction lesson you learn what it is you learn some uses yeah. but you can't expect to walk away and know like mm -hmm. oh okay, i've got this I you have to use it and use it and use it, use it. yeah yeah just again just like in our native language when we learn grammar we practice it for years like mm -hmm. you go through a couple of different grades of school and then you still yeah. make mistakes with some of those mm -hmm. it takes time and um you get the initial grammar concept and then you really are just patient with yourself okay. to understand that you're learning even if you don't understand it completely okay so if they learn it and mm -hmm. at that moment they don't understand they actually don't need to feel too stressful or like too you know self blaming right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they need to practice using it and get feedback on how they use it and the more that they just keep practicing and getting feedback, it'll just yeah. gradually become more clear. Mm, and become more natural, right, to them. And Not yeah. Actually, yeah, okay, cool. Totally agree. Mm. Okay, and the uh, last one will be, what do you feel, um, how do you feel the difference between the textbook content with the real life um, I don't know about Chinese, maybe because maybe there are a lot, not many Chinese speaker around you, but yeah. um, are you actually like maybe um, listening to some, I don't know, podcasts or like watching some videos in Chinese? Yeah, so my level is, uh, I'm still very much a beginner in mm -hmm. Mandarin, and, but I have started listening to some videos, mainly um, HSK one, yeah. uh, like vocabulary grammar videos, yeah. especially since I know quite a bit of it now, like most of it, um, yeah. but there's still some vocabulary things that come up. But yeah. the videos that I watch and listen to, they are structured for language learners of Mandarin. Yeah. It's not like, a conversation like a podcast or something because that is just beyond my level right now okay. mm. but that is very valuable and I do that like with my French right now I'm I'm on um, a bit of a French music binge right now so that um, is really useful oh. but it's more useful when you're at a little bit of a higher level like the oh. intermediate or so level yeah. at least for me that's what I think mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because um, the problem that I found in, I mean, Chinese language mm -hmm. um, from the textbook, it's always like there are a lot of them are not practical enough um, that people can use these things in the real life. Like when they go out of the classroom, I always have students say this to me. They say, um, why uh, in the class teacher can understand me? or um, my, my classmate can understand me. But when I walk out from the classroom, like when I talk to people and I don't understand the word. So I feel like how, there's a very important thing like to balance between the um, real life language speaking style and the textbook style. How do you balance them um, for example, for your French or Spanish? So I think that's a really good word to use for it, to balance them, because mm -hmm. we do need both. We need that academic structure yes. if we want to be able to use the language yeah. well, like, you know, in an educated way, then we need education. But um, and even, you know, just using the language in conversation, uh, we still need that structure. And yeah. I think that the biggest thing here, this is going back to still the um, the expectation of the students to be able to use what they learn immediately in that kind of practice, because what we learn in the classroom is not always that way. It's not always something that you learn and then use right away. It's something that trains us to use the language yeah. and it's the, the structure, but we need to build on it. We need to add in, like, add in listening to podcasts, add in all of these fluency aspects, add in more reading and mm -hmm. uh, all of these different components. And then you'll begin to develop that fluency. But I think people get frustrated or, or put off by it because it's it's something that it one, it takes a while, but also it's difficult to see your own progress when you're yeah. in it because. Mm -hmm it like it, it just takes a while so if you look at it like from one day and then like the next week you mm -hmm. might not much yes get where you are now and then where you are in three or four months then you yeah. can see measurable progress if you're you know if you're doing what you need to do mm -hmm. and i think that the mindset shift is to look at i am learning as long as mm -hmm. i'm going through and i'm doing and i'm practicing and then to not feel like you have to see like, the progress in the moment because that's not going to happen so much. You're not going to see it in the moment. Yes, yes. Yeah, we always have to keep in mind that learning a language is a long, long term thing, right? Yeah. Don't rush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much for sharing all this. It's so valuable. And uh, would you like to introduce your language dojo school a little bit? Oh, sure. Think? So what we do there in the Linguist Dojo is uh, we are an integrated approach to reading, writing, speaking, and listening. <laughs> and again, oh. my martial arts perspective on language learning, which really is has influenced like a lot of what I've said today with that process of learning, yeah. because it's the same process essentially. Like takes years to go through to get you know to work up to a black belt like people don't look at like people look and they're like oh you just you just go in and you earn this but no yeah. it takes years and years and years of practice and repeating and using techniques in different forms and components and mm -hmm. language in that same way yeah. and with those pieces so what i've done is taken reading writing speaking and listening as those components mm -hmm. and uh, created a curriculum that teaches students how to understand how to develop each of those four core skills and how to integrate them and use them for long term success in language learning. Oh, OK, so and you also have a Chinese section there, right? Yes, we do okay. have Chinese sections there as well. So we have the language uh, classrooms in the <laughs> Linguist Dojo, and those are in addition to the core curriculum, there okay. are uh, a select uh, language classrooms so we have mandarin at one of those yeah that's great okay so if you guys are interested definitely check out the description link i will put it there okay so thank you so much sarah and i hope to see you next time <laughs> bye, bye.
Bye.